Hello guys and welcome back to a new 3D printer review here at Architects 3DP. Today I'm going to review the JG Aurora or JG Maker Magic 3D printer. I already published the unboxing and assembly of this nice 3D printer here in the channel, but I recommend you to watch through the links in the description. Now, as I said, I'm going to start with the review of the JG Aurora Magic. I will let you the link in the description, by the way, in case you want to buy it. But before starting, be sure to click here in the subscribe button and to ring that bell to be notified when new cool stuff is uploaded. If you do it, it will help me create new content and grow in the channel to reach more special viewers like you. As you may remember, the assembly video ended after leveling the bed and starting the very first print of our JG Maker Magic, using the Ambar PETG from Sakata 3D Filaments. I'm gonna show you real quick the results of that print in this time lapse. Done, we can remove the removable print bed to make the print removal easier. I'm gonna put this print here on the side and I will talk about it later. Now I'm going to focus on the review of the JG Aurora Magic 3D printer. As you already know from the previous videos, it's a very easy to assemble 3D printer kit that comes in 8 modules that you will have to put together. Once we are done with the assembly, the first that you can tell is that the JG Maker Magic is very robust and stable, since it's an all metal 3D printer, what will make it durable too, as well as good looking, following the design evolution we can feel on every 3D printer brand. The JG Aurora Magic has an external size of 443 by 450 by 472 millimeters with a weight of approximately 8 kilos or 9 kilos with the filament loaded and the advertised print volume is 220 by 220 by 250 millimeters. Despite with a bit of tweaking we could get to the maximum dimensions we got in the assembly video that are 236 by 223 by 250 millimeters. This huge print volume will allow us to make really cool and big prints such as the ones I shown in the Gitex Silk Purple PLA video I uploaded a while ago and you will find linked in the description. It features a removable heated bed able to reach 110 degrees Celsius and finished with a black coated surface that will help our prints to stick perfectly. It is not magnetic or adhesive, so we'll need to use these included little clamps to hold it in place. By the way, I removed part of them to give more free space to the print bed. Also, it doesn't feature auto bed leveling or whatever, so we'll have to level it manually as I showed you in the assembly video that you will find linked down in the description. The extruder block is very compact and runs smoothly through the V-slot profile of the X-axis, and the hot end is able to reach temperatures up to 245 degrees. It comes with a 0.4mm nozzle installed and also a second spare one in a bag, but we'll be able to install whatever size we want, having in mind that we're gonna be using a 1.75mm filament. The power supply is integrated under the main body of the printer, making it safer, as well as the electronics and the screen board. This makes the whole build so clean, since we won't see any cables messing everything up as we can see for example in the Architects 3DP i3 that we built a while ago in a complete series and you can watch clicking right here. This set of specs will allow us to print with almost any material, such as PLA, ABS, TPU or PETG, rich layer thicknesses in between 0.05 and 0.3 mm, as well as print speeds in between 10 and 150 mm per second, despite JG Aurora recommends us to use it in between 30 and 60 mm per second. As with many other printers, we'll be able to control it via USB from the Cura interface for example, or well through the LCD display and control dial. That by the way is the best I've seen in a 3D printer. Apart from these nice features, the GG Maker Magic includes some very cool extras that I want to talk about. To start I want to talk about the right filament holder that is attached to the frame. It will make transporting your 3D printer way much easier, since you will be able to lift the whole printing set with one hand, without the need of carrying external filament holders. The next cool feature is that it has a filament detection system, that will pause the print if we run out of filament and will prevent lots of possible print failures. I had a small issue with it. Since when you buy and assemble the 3D printer, the filament sensor is facing down, and when you install a new filament spool, the filament won't go through since simply the angle is not wide enough. To solve that, I bend the metal using a pair of pliers. That way, the sensor is now facing the origin of the filament and will run without any issues. And last but not least, 
special feature that I like the most is the resume print function. It has already saved me from a lot of failed prints, since I used to have microcads in my electricity network, what forced me to buy a UPS for my architect's 3D PI3. With the JG Maker magic, it's not necessary, since if you get an electricity cat, the next time you turn the printer on, it will ask you to continue with the print, but will hit the printer and continue from the exact same point it stopped. Last point of this video, I just want to show you some prints that I've made with this nice 3D printer, with different filaments such as PLA and PETG, that as you can see look really amazing. I haven't tested TPU with this 3D printer yet, since it's using a Bowden extruder and I prefer to print it with my direct drive printers that I'm sure won't run into any issue, but definitely that's something that I will test very soon. Finally, I just wanted to ask you to subscribe to Architects 3DP if you still haven't, so more people will be able to enjoy with this project. And as always, a special shout out to our Patreon supporters for making this channel possible. If you want to join them and support the channel as well, you can do it navigating to patreon.com slash architects3dp, clicking here in the top right corner or in the link in the description. Remember that becoming a Patreon, you will get access to all the necessary components for this project, as well as all the past projects in the channel, and much more rewards that you can check in our Patreon page. Okay guys, so as always, see you in the next video.